wherever you are around the world. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as that really, really helps support the channel. Also turn on your post notifications so you never miss another one of my videos and you get notified the second I go live. Now, today I'm gonna show you the behind the scenes, kind of like the workflow uh, live, so I'm not hiding anything of the Quick Mill Anita Evo. Uh, it's a heat exchanging machine, which is a great espresso machine. So I wanna just stop and say thank you guys so much over at Espresso Outlet, his name is Joe, for sending me this grinder uh, to review on the channel as well as the Anita Evo. Um, these were both sent to me. However, I am just doing a review on the Anita Evo. More videos to follow coming this week and next week. However, very, very excited to be able to use this machine and I'm just gonna show you kind of an inside look of the workflow that I have been having with this machine. So I am just gonna be pulling a couple shots of espresso just to dial in the coffee uh, of choice for today, which is from Good Brothers Coffee. It is light to medium roast, more on the medium side, and it is Ethiopia Argo, which is, uh, it was roasted October 1st, 2021 with tasting notes of lilac, nectarine, and honey. So if you guys aren't familiar with Good Brothers, definitely go check out Brent and Good Brothers. They make great quality beans. Um, no, I'm not sponsored by them, but they are really, really good beans. So I'm gonna give you guys a look into my workflow when using this machine. So I'm gonna kind of set you guys over here and just kind of show you like what I usually do on a day-to-day -day basis when pulling my shots of espresso. So. I'll go ahead and just dose out about 20 grams. I'm gonna do 22 grams because um, the port bottomless porter filter that Joe gave me is actually pretty deep. And I feel like 20 grams just isn't enough for this one because I think this is a 22 gram basket. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do 22 grams. I don't normally say do 22 grams because I don't recommend that, but that's a lot. But we're gonna go ahead and dose that out. We're gonna use the DF64 and my mod that I just got for the DF64, which makes your life so much easier when using the DF64. And we'll go 23 grams, because like I said, this basket is huge, and we might as well just be extra caffeinated while we use this machine. So uh, here is the dosing cup. So I'm gonna come over here, get, turn this around, give you guys a, uh, a better look here. So I'm just gonna dump this right into the hopper. This is a customized wood lid for Dylan Thomas Espresso Bar. So if you guys are interested in a customized lid for your DF64, make sure to check out my website as well. But instead of using the dosing cup, we are actually going to be using our, uh, our collar here. Just make sure that the basket's all nice and dry. And the collar just sits on this beautifully, just like this. And it allows for uh, a really clean, transfer from the DF64 to the actual porter filter for drag dosing. So let me just go ahead and turn you guys around so you guys can get a better view of what this looks like from the top view. I'll zoom in here. Really, really nice. And here we go. Just gotta push down some of those beans sometimes. It gets stuck with the um, anti-popcorn device. But like you see, there is zero spillage of beans because obviously the collar helps that. So then you can just take this out and then it's withheld inside this collar here. So give you guys a better look which it's pretty nice. Um, just kind of hold it and just kind of shake it to where uh, you want to distribute it inside the puck. So I'll bring you guys back over here so you guys can get a better view of my workflow. So now that we have that all taken care of, uh, I just like to give it a couple more shakes here. Uh, you can even do WDT inside of this, which is nice. So if you guys would like, I normally do WDT if I'm not in a hurry, just because it does help uh, the flow of your shot. Just kind of give it a nice little tiny tap there. Make sure it's all nice and level. Uh, I'm using a product by Normcore. This is their all-in-one tamping and distribution tool, which works very, very nice as well. 
All right. So we got a nice flat base here, nice puck. Tamping it with the norm core. And here you have your nice solid puck preparation. So really, really good. Definitely a must have for your DF64. It also comes with another one that goes over the top of the lid, uh, which is machined to fit that as well. So I'm just gonna get my scale pretty much set. So because this is a heat exchanger, you wanna make sure that you release some of that, that uh, heat because that heat is, that steam is way too hot for espresso. So I like to run it for a second, just rinse the drip tray and let it sit just for a second and then lock it in there. Move this over. If you guys want your customized Don't Some Espresso Bar plate or anything, it is available. All right, here we go. We'll use the Kruv shot glass. Let's just hope that it is uh, not gonna spill out everywhere. We'll go about a four second pre-infusion. I'll give you guys a better view of the bottomless once this shot gets done. So this one's choked pretty bad. So we're gonna have to go a little bit coarser on our grind. All right, yeah, so we're just gonna let this shot play out here. Um, like I said, it is pretty, pretty uh, fine here. But I wanted to do this for you guys on purpose like this, so that way it wasn't a perfect shot the very first time. We were at 14 on the grind setting. Now we're gonna go to about 19. So we're gonna make a pretty big adjustment based on we're only getting five out in a minute. So we're just gonna go ahead and shut that off because that's not gonna be any good. But you wanna let the water kind of run through it so that way you have uh, a nicer puck to kind of dump out. So I'll bring you guys out here. So if you guys are new to the channel, again, make sure to consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so we're just going to take that puck. Nice puck, but obviously way too fine. Clean out your porta filter. Just keep everything all nice and clean. I always have a towel. These towels are definitely lifesavers. They definitely keep everything all clean and uh, not wet. So definitely recommend purchasing a towel for your espresso bar. All right. So now that we know that that was way too fine, I always like to wipe the shower screen too so that way there's no extra grinds that are just sitting there. So we're gonna go ahead and dose out 23 grams. I know that's a lot, but like I said, the problem is with this basket, they do have uh, quite a big size in there, which I could change the basket out, but I'll just keep the same. All right, exactly 23 again. We're going to go ahead and dump that into the grinder here. Put our shot collar on. I always like to just stick this in there first and then put that on. It's a lot easier. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. It's going to be disgusting. Absolutely gross. Oh, my gosh. Don't do that. Save yourselves and don't do that. I don't know why I do that kind of stuff for you guys. Oh, that was just miserable. That was miserable. Oh, man, that was disgusting. My wife's laughing at me in there because it was just that gross. If you don't believe me, do an uh, over-extracted shot that barely even comes out and try that. Just chug it like I did for you guys. It's just absolutely disgusting. All right, so we got our nice preparation here. 
Let's just use the all-in-one tool that it comes with. So you can even tamp it and just kind of flatten it out like so. So you've got your nice clean puck again. Just kind of wipe off the edges so it's not all gunked up in your shower screen. And then let me get you guys to a better angle so you guys can see the shot. Actually, I'll just pull this off when I go and lock in the porter filter. So here we go. All right. So again, just lift the lever to release that steam. Because this is a heat exchange, you have to make sure that the water is not too, too hot. So you do have to temperature surf a tad bit. Uh, you can pretty much brew your shot of uh, espresso and froth your milk at the same time, which is a nice uh, thing about this machine. So, all right, let me go ahead and set this underneath. I'm just going to use the same cup. So we're just going to lift for pre-infusion. And then go ahead and lift it all the way. So already looks a ton times better than the other shot. All right, shot looks pretty good there. Stop it at about 40 grams. Still pretty uh, over extracted, but not too, too bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm not even gonna lie. Nice tiger striping, so definitely good tiger striping there. But the shot was still 52 seconds long. But overall, shot looks really good. Got nice, beautiful tiger striping to it. So let's just go ahead and uh, grab my crew stirring stick here. I know it's in one of these cups, so you don't really have to. Kind of stir it in here. Cheers. Yeah, so definitely um, pretty sour. Uh, I'll go ahead and do uh, one more shot for you guys. Like I said, this is just a look into the Quick Mill uh, Nita Evo machine. Really, really nice machine. I've really enjoyed using this machine. Uh, I definitely say that it is a bit more cramped than my other machines to use just because everything's so close. You have the hot water spout and the steam wand that's pretty much right next to each other. So you have to move these out of the way every time. Not a big deal. Just something that I'm not used to because everything else is pretty clear. But as for temperature control and stuff, being a heat exchanger, it hasn't been too it hasn't been too hard. Uh, steaming is a little bit different than both my machines, but steaming on every machine is going to be different. Uh, once you master one machine, you got to master another. And yes, they are all different machines, so unfortunately, you have to do it multiple. So. I'm gonna set that shot aside. I am still going to use that shot um, for a ice beverage here soon, but I am going to uh, just wait for now, make another one for you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and get our dosing cup. We got a lot of stuff going on over here. I normally would use my Akaya, but it's over there, so just making the lunar do over here. So again, another 23 grams. Stay caffeinated, my friends. Got to move this out of the way. I was going to do this one as an edited video, but wanted you guys to see kind of the behind the scenes and how you adjust based on uh, what you're getting on your shots. So you want to stay consistent. If you're at 23 grams the first time, stay consistent and use the 23 grams again. So there is 22.9 and perfect, 23. So we're going to go ahead and put it into our grinder here. 
get our collar, stick it in there. This is a pretty tight fit for the, uh, I think this is the Rancheria Silvia um, bottomless porter filter. So let's change this grind size to like 23 because it still is, uh, it still needs some work. But as you see, this, this collar really does a great job keeping the beans inside of your porter filter. So obviously you see here, you see that there is quite a bit of static around the side of this, but this does its job and it keeps it all maintained, which is anything that you want with this especially. So just gonna go ahead and shake it around. Do some WDT, you don't have to, definitely optional. I just like to kind of mix it up on the top just because it helps me. Give it a little tap, not too much because you obviously don't want to disrupt the puck or break it because then you're gonna get channeling. And then we'll go ahead and use the norm core again. All right, so there you go. You got your nice puck preparation. And we're gonna go ahead and pull our shot. So I will take this off and show you guys the view here in a second. All right, so again, just release some of that steam. Wipe this down. You have this underneath. And we'll go ahead and put this shot glass on there. Hopefully we don't have a ton of channeling because that would be awful. About a five second pre-infusion there. So got quite a bit of channeling there, as you guys can see. So if you guys saw that shot came out pretty quick, but on paper, you have the 27 seconds and the 40 seconds out. So obviously there's no hiding the, the, um, the shot there. Definitely a lot of channeling, which can definitely be due to some puck prepara preparation issues. But let's go ahead and pull that out and see if it makes a big difference in taste. Because we obviously see the channeling was there. But just because there's channeling doesn't mean it doesn't taste good. So let's check it out. So on paper, like I said, it definitely looks way better than the first one. So let's go ahead and uh, stir this and give it a try. Okay. Cheers. So this one's definitely a little bit more balanced than this one. This was a, still a bit on the sour side, uh, still a little bit sour for this guy. So even if I did it again, um, I would definitely recommend maybe um, either a longer pre-infusion or grinding a little bit finer um, with the grind or coarser, but obviously it came out really fast. You saw how much CO2 was still needed to be released with the beans, which these aren't old by any means. They're still pretty new. They're nine days old, roasted date. But yeah, I definitely say that they need a little bit more time to uh, kind of sit there. I like to have usually pull my shots within like the first maybe eight or nine days of uh, the roast date. I don't like to do it too fresh because you see that huge donut that forms uh, pretty much all comes from the outside and forms to the center. But as you can see, this machine has definitely been um, really good. The workflow is not bad at all. Uh, definitely enjoyed the machine. Now with it being a heat exchanger, um, pretty much all my machines except for my Breville Express, Brista Express was, uh, is a dual boiler. And I can just say that dual boilers are um, so much easier to work with 
but this heat exchanger has definitely uh, opened my eyes to uh, new espresso machines and I would definitely recommend this one. This is coming in at about uh, the same price as the uh, Breville dual boiler and I can tell you the build quality of this machine is uh, extremely good to be honest. And I mean this thing is completely well built. The only thing is is every single component on this machine just gets so hot that I mean it'll, it'll burn you really quick so definitely make sure that if you do decide on purchasing one of these machines that you uh, that you just keep this away from kids because anything like I touched like even that here I mean everything on this machine except for the lever and the spouts are the only thing that doesn't get hot on this thing and the drip tray so yeah just know that uh, steam on this is really good as you guys can see so the steam is really nice. The hot water spout, so much water pressure. So, I mean, when it comes to functionality, this machine definitely fits um, extremely well. Budget uh, on your counter, it is a bit long. So this is a pretty long counter and it, it literally just sits off the edge. I was actually afraid it wasn't gonna fit on this and I was gonna have to put it in my kitchen. Um, I definitely feel that it will fit underneath your counter. If you guys want to know the measurements and everything, make sure to check out my previous video, but make sure to also check out my uh, soon videos that I'm going to be posting. Uh, I do have new baskets that I'm going to be showing for extra fine or extra coarse for darker and lighter roasted coffee. Uh, that was sent to me by a uh, very barista to review on the channel. So make sure to stick around for that and a ton more fun content coming to you guys soon. So again, thank you guys so much for the love and support. This has been the workflow using the Quick Mill Anita Evo. And until next time, peace.